Caribou Targi National Forest. So it's Toby from the Forest Service Utah Avalanche Center. I'm up here in uh, St. Charles Canyon in southeast Idaho up above Bear Lake. I'm looking at an avalanche that's uh, really recent. It was probably triggered this weekend um, and I'm not exactly sure about the story. It was observed and not reported. But the avalanche is about, about two feet deep and it slid on a, a, a faceted layer of snow, a real thin faceted layer above a rime crust from early December. Um, and it actually ran on the rime crust. Um, so a little bit different than most of the other avalanches I've been seeing around here in that it didn't uh, run on basal layer facets, but on a, a mid-pack um, uh, layer of facets above a uh, rime crust. All right, so I'm on a east facing slope, mostly east facing, and it's only 36 degrees in slope steepness. The uh, snow depth here is, is about 130 centimeters um, or around four feet uh, of snow. Um, but the avalanche, it didn't slide on the ground in this case. It slid on a thin weak layer about halfway up the snowpack. They're right in this area here. So most of the other avalanches in, uh, in the area avalanche and they slid on one of these uh, faceted layers of really weak snow and it's still really weak. But this avalanche actually failed above a rime crust uh, about two feet off the ground and also about two feet below the surface. And this is a, a layer of small faceted uh, grains of snow. It's a real thin layer and it sits on top of a, of a small rime crust. It's a little bit crumbly, a little rime crust. So I'm down here in a really large debris pile in the middle fork of St. Charles Canyon. This is a, a slope that has a history of, of accidents. Um, and down here, I found an area that's all dug up and looks like somebody was able to ride a sled out of here shortly after the avalanche occurred. Uh, there are tons of, of footprints around here and a couple other holes. Up. Um, I, I don't know the story, um, but it looks like somebody was probably caught in this avalanche. And um, I'd sure love to, to hear more about uh, what happened. So if you trigger a large avalanche in the backcountry, it's really important that you report it so uh, people don't come out here and risk uh, life and limb to, to try to find somebody who's not here. Um, and that's, that's really it's the like, main uh, Somebody was pretty lucky here, probably got caught and carried by this avalanche. And uh, luckily uh, survived, apparently. Uh, nobody's missing this time. Um, but the avalanche was unreported. It happened at some point this weekend, uh, Friday or later, possibly Saturday. So I'm doing a, a quick um, a beacon search here in the debris, um, and that's just a good habit to get into if you come upon a fresh avalanche up here in the backcountry. Uh, give it a quick once over with your beacon and make sure uh, nobody got caught in it. Um, this one appears to be a day or two old and uh, nobody's been reported missing, but I'm still going to um, look around a little bit with my beacon just to make sure that nobody's um, up here still. So hey folks, if you, if you happen to trigger avalanches like this, um, we'd really love to know about it. Please uh, send your observations in to us. We're at uh, utahavalanchecenter.org and uh, boy, you know, We'd love to hear about avalanches like this. Not only are they fascinating, uh, but also the information uh, that you provide us could save lives. Uh, just uh, for, for other people to know that this kind of activity is possible.